So uh, I'm here. Or oh, is the sound okay? Um, I'm here to talk a bit about uh, the leap process update problem. Um, I will first motivate where I'm coming from, how I decided to look into the problem. Um, I gave last year a presentation uh, about the leap process crash reporter. Um, I've implemented that for LeapProfess 5.2. We are using that in production in the TDF builds already. Um, so how does the LeapProfess crash reporter work? Um, it's based on uh, BreakBird, a library developed by Google for Google Chrome, used by Mozilla for Firefox and Thunderbird. On the server side, we have a simple uh, Django-based server that accepts crash reports, processes them, uses the symbols that we generate during the, the build uh, to um, symbolify uh, the crash reports. Uh, on the leap office side, a signal handler intercepts the, the uh, crash uh, and writes out a mini dump file. And during the next startup, uh, we uh, upload the file plus some uh, metadata to the server. So metadata is, for example, the OpenGL driver, the device, uh, the GDI count recently. Um, sh if we are in shutdown, because we have quite a number of shutdown related crashes. So how does it look? So th that's a chart from the uh, Crash Reporter website, and it lists the uh, number of crashes per day. Uh, you can see here that's 5.2.4, and yeah, we uh, managed to squeeze in uh, a nasty, actually two nasty issues um, that, that we managed to fix for 5.2.5, uh, um, where we had some shutdown crashes if there was an object in the in the clipboard. Um, and uh, some font stuff if we did not find a font and we did not find a font because uh, all the new um, or we only discovered new fonts and all the uh, printer related fonts were not discovered uh, we aborted it and uh, created a crash report so the crash reporter has some issues um, there are 5.2.4 Build, we could have discovered the, the issue quite early if we would have known that there's a crash that affects a lot of users. But we only have absolute numbers. So we get only the information, okay, we have 50 crashes per day. But we don't know if these 50 crashes are from 500 users or from 5 million users. Um, we, we have the issue that our RC builds are, are not used that much. I, I see it a lot in the crash reporter. Uh, we have maybe 20 to 50 uh, crashes a day for the RC and uh, beta builds. And then we have uh, 500 or, or 5,000 for a, a final build. And uh, our second issue that, that is quite bad, if you look here, um, we still have 250 crashes a day for 5.2.0, which was released, I think, in August last year. <coughs> and 5.2.1 was released in September last year, so five and six months ago. And still a lot of users are using that and are reporting crashes. So that these numbers show that, that users are not updating regularly or not everybody is updating. We released about once a month uh, a new final build, but apparently uh, quite a number of our users stay with these old builds and don't use a newer build. So the solution is to uh, instead of reporting absolute numbers, divide the number of daily crashes by the number of active daily users or active daily installs. That's what Mozilla does. Uh, that's what we should do. So our problem is 
uh, we don't have any idea how many daily users we have. We, we have some ideas how many people have downloaded LibreOffice, but not how many people are actually using LibreOffice. <coughs> so um, I started, therefore, to look into how we can solve this update problem. We have some code already in this direction. We have the update checker. It checks if a new version is available and uh, notifies the user. Um, it, the user still needs to install manually, and apparently most users don't do that. And we had a Google Summer of Code project 2015 that already worked on, on a, the code for Mozilla, porting it to LibreOffice, integrating it into our build, um, but it's currently only um, enabled if you use this special configure flag here. So I, I did some work there recently. I started with the Google Summer of Code code because uh, it was already integrated. The Mozilla concept looks good. Um, <clears throat> I, I've enabled the signature, uh, signature tracking. I will talk about signatures later a bit more. Uh, they are important uh, to ensure that we are only installing uh, what we deliver and not some other stuff. Uh, I fixed the Windows build system and the update service. Uh, I will talk about the update service on Windows in a bit. Um, I, I updated the version of the updated code that was uh, brought into the LibreOffice code base uh, as part of the Google Summer of Code project. Actually, that's, that was quite a lot of work uh, because the code has changed a lot. Um, the, the code uh, is comes from Mozilla, they have a lot of specific needs. Uh, it was had some code for Firefox OS, obviously we don't need that. Um, there's lo a lot of hard-coded Mozilla part in there. Um, yeah, it, It's now integrated into the build system, um, the generation of the update files, um, the, the libraries, uh, the services, the, the executables that we build. So, how does updating work? Because it's not that easy. We, we have an old LibreOffice that we want to update. It asks the update server, and the update server tells it, OK, here I have a new update. Uh, LibreOffice <coughs> instance downloads the update. But now we, we have a new executable, the updater, uh, that comes or we really need that because in Windows we can't change a file that's currently opened by another process. So we can't just change ourselves, which we can on Linux. But <coughs> the problem is that this uh, process is still uh, a normal user process and the LibreOffice instance is normally stored in a system folder. So we can't uh, change that. Uh, uh, the process process. Uh, the solution that Mozilla has developed, and I think a few other update services uh, use, is to have a um, Windows service uh, that is installed uh, during the installation, and that's a system user. So you, you start the, sy uh, the, the system service, um, uh, and that system service can now start an update process more or less the same executable, but this time uh, as a system user, which can update a file in a system folder. So actually, we run here the, the real update code uh, that generates a new uh, LibreOffice instance, uh, overwrites the old code, and then starts LibreOffice again with the old uh, parameters. And we have then a, a new LibreOffice running. So. The fun parts. I already mentioned there are a few problems. Uh, the first one is you can't change a file that's open. We, we have this update service and the update executable for that. And, and the second one that you realize quite quickly if you read the Mozilla uh, Bexilla about the update code is there are a lot of things that can go wrong and that screw up your security badly. Like we are running uh, 
um, executable automatically that runs as a system user uh, and install new stuff in a system folder. We, we could more or less do anything if we screw up there. So um, to avoid that anyone ships uh, code and we install, we, we need to make sure that at every step of, of here, the, the update file that, that we transport is signed, that, that the um, executable that has called us is signed by us, and that the executable that we exe will execute is signed by us. So make sure that we can trust every part of, of this uh, process. And um, a, a huge problem that, that we have is multi-user setups. We, we don't store any um, installation uh, information in a location that, that we, uh, a user ca can change. So we can't uh, store the information that we currently have started an update process until we reach the, the stage that we have the update service running. So, so there's uh, potentially an issue with the race condition and I haven't looked into uh, that yet. And I suppose there's no easy solution on the LibreOffice side uh, yet. Um, I think Mozilla uses uh, or writes into the registry and uh, checks the registry uh, to detect that issue. LibreOffice does not use the registry on Windows at all. So how do the update files look? So they are MAR files. It's just uh, something the Mozilla guys have come up with. It's BZIP based. You just uh, take uh, a, um, an archive, but it has the ability to generate partitional updates. So it can uh, contain information that uh, some of the files have changed um, and just write the, the diff of these two files. Um, we have a tool to generate these partitional update files. It's integrated into the build. Um, my solution is I have the final, uh, the full build files that I create. I, I download them when I want to uh, generate a partitional file. Uh, I diff the, the two versions and generate then uh, the, the new partitional version. An important part is the file can be uh, signed after the, the whole archive has been created. That's quite important for the uh, release engineering so we can um, sign files in a central location. Um, you, you can even store some release channel information uh, and you can check them in the update uh, if you want to ensure that we are not going back or not uh, installing updates from a different update channel so it's that the user can't tr trick us into installing something that we have signed but that we actually don't want to use, like in a, in a, a company. You, you might want to use an update channel that uh, only uh, provides um, the, the stable releases of our uh, still build. Um, there's an executable, uh, it's called MAR, quite easy to remember. You work with MAR files, the executable is called the same, and, and you can use it to check what's in the file. You can uh, uncompress them with that. Uh, you can check the signatures and so on. So the server, Mozilla uses Bulwark. It's tightly integrated into the Mozilla infrastructure. I tried to, to reuse it, but similar to the crash report, uh, it makes a lot of assumptions about the infrastructure that we at TDF just don't have. So I looked at what we actually need, and we just need to return uh, a few informations. We, we will send to the server um, the information uh, about our build and we get back a JSON file with the information about the update that's available or if there's no update available at all. And LibreOffice just then downloads from the location that we provide uh, the update. Um, we have some unique um, problems that are not available for Mozilla. We have language packs, we have help packs, 
Uh, and I, I mentioned earlier we want to collect uh, user information. We want to know how many users we actually have. It's not really user information, just how many people are uh, checking for updates so that we have an estimation uh, about how many users are currently using which version and integrate that back into the crash reporter. Um, I have a simple uh, Django-based uh, server running at the moment. It's running on one of my servers. Um, and I've used that uh, to uh, test the um, infrastructure. So I have a prototype that works uh, with Linux already. So what's done? And what, um, as I mentioned, it works on Linux. Um, but on Linux, we can't update for, uh, a LibreOffice installation that's installed into a secure location yet. Uh, I'm not sure if we will ever be. I'm not sure if we want to. Um, it compiles on Windows. So every part now compiles, even the update service. Um, we, we can generate the MAR files, complete and partial. It's part of the build system, at least in my branch. You, you can tell it, okay, generate uh, these more files, and, and they end up in WorkDeer and, and the initial server. So I think about 70% is done, but we still have a few things. On, on Windows the inst uh, installation, uh, how does MSI play into the role? Um, we install independently suddenly from MSI stuff. How does deinstalling uh, work with MSI again? Um, the update service is not integrated into, into the MSI yet, so it's not installed at all. Um, I haven't tested that it works on Windows because the update service is not installed yet. Um, we need automated tests because if you have these partitional update files, um, you have the problem, you have so many different configurations suddenly. You, you have the, the build that, uh, you com uh, that you have done, uh, a complete build, and you have the situation, you have an old build that you have updated, but still need to make sure that the updated build is more or less the same as the um, old one, and that it works, and that the installation works. So we need tests there. Uh, it needs to be integrated into release engineering, so uh, I, I still need to talk to our release engineers uh, and see how that can be done. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes. yes. I will come to you and see how we can make at least an update notification for <coughs> Solaris 11. For the codes I do. Okay. I, I, I want to know as well how many people are using your old versions or the new version. Yeah. So just notify them it's running for a year without problems. If people do not update. So yeah. I just want to give them the idea to update. Yes, so we have the, that with the update check a bit. Um, I, I've but uh, that, that's about for, for TDF builds to, to distribute then the, the complete update information. The difference I, we, for OpenGana and Solar, we don't need a distribution, we just need to, to trigger the users, press the button for update. Yeah. Okay. Can we? Uh, is it possible to update the updater? Yes. Uh, you, uh, so the update. Uh, this updater executable is part of the normal libreoffice. That's why we copy it. We, we copy it to a different location in a temporary directory, uh, so that we don't change the, the yeah. So that we don't change our ourselves. Uh, if you want to run a service, how are you going to do that? What? If you run your updater as a service on Windows. Yes. How are you going to reinstall the thing? That, that's the, the, the more complicated part. Uh, I, Mozilla does that. Uh, I still need to look into how they solve it. But they have solved it, so it, it's not impossible. But, uh, We're in on the moon, so no problem. We'll get there again. Yeah, but, but the bigger problem is uh, because the update service is independent, uh, it's independently, uh, independently installed uh, in a different, uh, as a different executable or even a different application. You don't update 
uh, that with the normal update. You update your LibreOffice that contains that code, but not the version that you are actually running. The modified contains uh, the full uh, uh, LibreOffice or just the diff between the two releases? Uh, you can have both. Uh, so the uh, full MAR file contains a, a full LibreOffice, and the partitional one uh, contains a diff between um, basically two directories. Um, or if it detects that the diff is too big, it just takes the, the full file. Okay, thanks. <laughs>